Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is the troubleshooting of a two speed PSC single phase 120 volt blower motor. So there's two taps for hot and one for common. Uh, what we're really looking for in this, I'm going to show you the resistance values of what a multi speed motor uh, should be and everything afterwards. But what we're looking for right now is that the thermal overload, if the thermal over overload opens due to a bad capacitor, or uh, bad start windings, what it looks like, all right, uh, in reference to testing resistance values and either condemning a motor or not condemning a motor, okay? Uh, you gotta wait for a blower motor to cool down before testing the resistance values, otherwise the thermal overload may not have a chance to uh, lower the resistance values so that you can get um, your proper readings on your windings, all right? So we're gonna go over that a little bit in, in this video here and uh, we're gonna run this little experiment real quick. Um, this motor winding, the start winding is bad on this blower motor uh, because there was actually literally water in the bottom of this blower motor stopped the wheel from turning right here. Uh, and uh, that's why this motor failed. The capacitor is good, but we're gonna go ahead and plug it in and see what temperature the thermal overload cuts out at before say the motor windings melting or catching on fire and then i'm going to show you a motor that's completely taken apart and uh, what the thermal overload looks like and resistance values of what the start winding is and um, the different speeds all right so here we go so i'm going to go ahead and plug it in and then you can listen for that noise All right, there should be a humming coming through. Um, hopefully you can hear that. And basically the, the, the motor is not running. So you see all these little air holes here? All those perforations in the, uh, the motor frame, basically that is there to help cool down the windings, all right, cool down the motor. So right now, power is being applied, it's drawing amperage, it's getting the correct voltage, but it's still not turning on. So, so once again, that could have to do with something like the start wires or the capacitor. All right, most of the time it is the capacitor, but why is the blower motor not burning up? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a temp sensor right here. And we're going to put that temp sensor in here, and we're going to go ahead and read the temperature. So as the temperature goes up, there's a thermal overload that ends up kicking it out. It's not a high amperage uh, kick out. It's a, it's a high temperature kick out. And, and it's only situated on one spot of the motor winding. It's, and it's typically very close to where the electrical wires come into the blower motor at. So I have a motor that is taken apart already. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at that in a minute here. I just want to follow the temperature as it rises. And then we can see when the thermal overload is actually kicking out. Of course, I don't have this temp sensor like completely, completely mounted onto the motor windings, but it's in there right next to them. And it's in this area too where the thermal overload is located at. So you want to be careful in this type of scenario. You don't want to be diagnosing wires and things like that when this thing is drawing amperage. You want to unplug it and then you can check for your resistance values. So we're just going to go ahead and follow this temperature up right now. It's at 253 degrees. Maybe that'll help you see it a little bit better. I'm not going to give it a little bit of time here and see when it kicks out. The thermal overload is located on the common wire inside, inside here. So regardless of whether it's a three speed, four speed, five speed blower motor, it's going to cut out the common wire on 120 volts. So this way, it, it's regardless of what speed you have it on, it, it will open the electrical circuit and the, the motor windings will not be powered. All right guys, we're at about 300 degrees right now and it's starting to really smell. Um, the smell that you're smelling is the motor windings, okay? The resin on the motor windings is starting to melt and that is basically reducing the life of that blower motor. So if you have preventative maintenance agreements and things and on your invoices, you write when you replace that capacitor you want to maintain those. You know, you want to end up replacing the capacitors before they go bad. And as well, you don't want a service call in the middle of the night. So, you know, may, you might want to do it every four years, you know, just to be safe because the capacitors really don't cost that much. So you have your, your one at your blower motor, you have your dual capacitor out at your heat pump or 
air conditioning condenser. So it's just one of those things you want to replace so that does not happen. So you don't have that type of damage on your blower motor. All right, I was just checking, <laughs> just checking to make sure to see if I could get in and get a better temperature right when that motor just kicked out with this thermal overload. So it's at, still at 300 degrees right there and it did kick out. But that's that. So now the motor is cut out. It didn't do a crazy amount of damage uh, to the windings, but it, it did, you know, the windings did suffer a bit. You know, you can smell it. Uh, and uh, I'm sure those of you that have uh, gone in there and um, found a motor in this type of situation, you've smelled that that smell of it, of it, of something melting. All right. Um, but at least it's not going to catch a fire uh, for the most part. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you what one looks like. All right, so here you have a four-speed, uh, single-phase, 120-volt PSE blower motor. And what we have here is on the common wire right here, you have the thermal overload. All right, so this is what it looks like right here. And it just sits right on top of the motor windings. So you have these little um, casings here that are holding all of this stuff on. But really, you have all of these thin wires that are bringing it into the windings. And none of these wires right here are actually touching. So you can see those wires right there. They actually have resin on the outside of them. Okay. Uh, but, but the thermal overload is on the common wire. The weight denotes common for 120 volts. All right. So if you don't have any resistance between common and your red, for instance, let's just go ahead and do that. I have the multimeter presently set on resistance. I'm going to use my alligator clips and clip on common. And hot. So we have 4.3. So that will be the high speed. So that will be the uh, lowest resistance value. So when we have it on the lowest speed, you're going to have the highest resistance value. See that? 6.4. All right, and then you have your second lowest, which is blue, at 5.6. So that's a little less resistance than the lowest speed. The yellow wire, that's the uh, second from highest, okay? And that has even lower resistance value than the blue, okay, because it's a faster speed, and once again, black is the high speed. All right, so that right there you have 4.2 ohms of resistance or so. So if you don't have any resistance between common and any of your speeds, it's most likely your thermal overload right here. you got to give the motor time to cool down. You, you don't want to say it, the blower motor is bad, um, but you want to give this time to cool down, especially if it's if, if the motors, you know, the power's off, the motor's real hot. Um, you, you want to give it time for this to end up cooling down. This is not a high amperage cutout. This is a high temperature cutout. So once it cools down, the resistance value will be low enough for um, the circuit basically to be closed again. All right. So uh, and then you have your brown, your brown wires right here. If just just while we have this out. Your resistance values between your brown wires, which go to the capacitor, are going to be a lot higher. So if they were ever um, open, then, then you would know that your start windings are bad. So right there you have 48 ohms of resistance. They're going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 25, 75 ohms. A lot of motors you're going to see right around that 50 ohm range uh, for, their, uh, for their start winding right there. Uh, but that's that. So I just wanted to, to show you that and show you what these uh, little thermal overloads look like. And I uh, hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Server Tech Channel.